that after we get back to the screen. So to kind of log, log, kind of log it in your head and make you think about it a little bit more. Um, the Second Amendment is that you know the right to bear arms. So you know everyone has or everyone over 18, depending on where you're at, the state over 21, other states, um, you have the right to own a gun. There's certain, certain local and state requirements you must meet. Third Amendment is no quartering of soldiers. Uh, it says that you know the government can't station quarters, can't have soldiers quartered in their house, which means you're going to take care of them, give them room and board, give them food, give them places to, to sleep. Uh, unless there's emergency or wartime, and, uh, even that, we've never done that in the United States. Uh, it kind of goes back to the, you know, the British force the colonists to take on the soldiers to stay in their house. Um, and also, the Third Amendment has been used somewhat for some equal housing or trying to get equal housing in certain places. To, uh, to succeed a little bit better as I see that as well. But um, we'll all come back to it. But remember, you're going to kind of see them again. You kind, of, kind of flew through them and you're going to hold up the time. And usually I do a thing on gun control, but we uh, decided to flip flop it legal in the United States. You cannot do it in the United States. Illegal. Don't read the first, the next paragraph. We're, we're going to kind of, we're going to go through this kind of quick this part. Why do you think? Okay, besides, a person is innocent until proven guilty. Why else do you think a bill of attainder is illegal in the United States? It has something to do with governmental process and government. Because if, if he didn't go to trial then. He wouldn't be able to set aside. Okay, that's still kind of innocent until proven guilty. Let's look from a government point of view. Why would it be kind of like illegal for the government, and specifically the legislative branch, to do that? If you okay, they might purpose that going after. Is that still kind of innocent until proven guilty? If we're talking about power as a government, who's supposed who? If this was legal, who would probably handle out? Would hand this out? Probably the Supreme Court, mm -hmm. okay, and this is what one of the reasons that we're kind of getting getting away from it, but um, that you have the legislative branch acting as the courts, which is a crossover, which is a crossing of their powers, and as part of separation of power, you could argue that they're not allowed to do that. Um, especially if you were probably originally, if you're in the southern states, that would probably be the only way that you could argue in one that case, because the southern states would have seen that uh, the legislative doesn't have the body. That's how the, that's how the right to do that. Okay, let's keep going. Um, Ex post facto law. Anyone know what ex post facto law is? Even if we go any going further, some of you guys are, have maybe heard of this before. Like the, the laws passed um, when the when a person committed the crime, and then when he really did it, the the law has not passed, and then after it passes, then you can't just convict him of that crime. Okay, good. So let's say that um, whatever it is like. In, for, in, usually in the 1970s, it was legal to drive 55. I mean, it was legal to drive 65 in, in a lot of areas. Um, in the 80s, they changed it to drive 55. Um, in big parts, most parts of the United States. Well, you can't go back and give everyone a ticket who, who was driving um, 60, 65 two months ago when the law was changed to 55. So if you broke a law before it became a law, they can't accuse you, they can't arrest you for committing that crime. And those are exposed facts as well. And um, it doesn't, it's, I mean, it sounds obvious. Obviously, you can't, you know, you can't throw someone in jail because they did something that they did it before it was law. But when it comes down to uh, a lot of legal matters um, and the way things are carried out, especially with the death penalty written way, that once they, a lot of people who did heinous crimes. They wanted to give them the death penalty even though they were sentenced before the death penalty was legal in the United States. Um, that was the ex post facto law, and they said they couldn't. Um, a lot of income tax situations, tax laws that changed, you know, the government wanted to go back and either taking more money from people, um, really didn't want to give more, more money to people. Yeah, but in a lot of those, in a lot of situations like that. And recently, when you have a lot of divorce courts, the, the, you know, the books were pretty thin on divorce courts in, up until the 1980s when we started having a lot. Uh, had a lot being more specifically kind of laid out that you had a, a lot of people, um, you know, being tried in one case and then three or four years later you had a new law come on the book and those people would have benefited greatly by that law and they want to try and go back and, and do, do the case um, and try and either if we're talking about money or possession or whatever. 
But um, because of the actual tax law, they won't. You know, you're tried for that time, and that's kind of it. All right. Okay, we might not even need to read. What's double jeopardy? Okay, well, go ahead, Cindy. Say you begin. Okay, and everyone, before you write down any kind of definition for double jeopardy, please put down Fifth Amendment. Just put it right in there any way you want to do it so you recognize that uh, this is part of the Fifth Amendment. Uh, because there's a lot of stuff in the Fifth Amendment. I'm not just, um, some of the stuff you're specifically going to know, but just to start formulating what are, what are the first ten of them, uh, double jeopardy is, goes under the Fifth Amendment. Okay. Cindy, what is it again? One more time. Okay. Um, most of you will you're found innocent, they cannot accuse you for that same crime again, or that same act again. You, obviously, if you do the same crime, crime again later down the road, they, and they have evidence on you or a suspicion, then they can try it on that case. Let me go over this again in a more an actual case. Um, in the McMartin case, um, uh, William Buck, let's see, is it, is it Ray Buck or William Buck? Mm -hmm. William Buck. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm not, I have the counts wrong, but um, I believe he had somewhere like 45 counts against him. That was 45 times that he had broken the law, or he was accused of breaking the law. Uh, remember, the case went on, and he ends up get, he ends up getting off on 37 of the counts, or, some, or something. I mean, the numbers are wrong, but roughly he got off on a big chunk of the counts. The, the, the jury found him innocent on 37 of the counts. Um, let's say those eight other counts. Um, they didn't think there was sufficient evidence, but they didn't make a decision was he guilty or innocent on that. So he got off. And the lawyers were going to appeal. They cannot ever, he cannot ever be, ever get to be, again, be tried on those 37 accounts. He was found innocent on those 37 accounts. Even if all of a sudden they find something that would reopen the case, in a sense, on one of those 37 accounts. But he can be retried on those eight counts. And that's what they were trying to do. They were trying to appeal and, um, and try him on those eight counts or whatever it was. It might have acted, I think it was 12 counts. But those 37 counts, He's innocent. You can never retry him again because of the double jeopardy. He's innocent. You can never retry him again on those 37 counts. But um, if there are any other accounts that were not found, you know, there, 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 there's no conclusion to them, you can try him again. And that's what these people are trying to do in this case. I heard of the field, but I haven't heard nothing about it. I think, I think, I think everyone's. Um, I don't know. I don't think anybody going to go to the field. I haven't heard anything in about a year now. But he originally. Remember that case already won't tell that he was pretty much guilty. And you're already ready to hang him. And he might be still guilty, but in court how they found him in the jury comes in. Interesting case. Okay, um Okay, where it says grand jury also put down fifth amendment. Alright, anyone remember a grand jury from American issues or anything else? Okay. Okay, it's kind of like a pre-trial kind of thing, where you're you're brought and they want to see um, you're you're officially accused of a crime, but they also have to prove in being accused of the crime at the grand jury, you have to prove that you have enough trial to get a court date. So usually, um, usually you will appear in front of a grand jury. You'll be accused of the crime. They will probably set up a court date once they see if there's enough evidence to have a court or to set up a court date. What the grand jury is like a screening process that they, they don't want to have set up trial dates and get into the courtroom and find out that lawyers or whoever had really weak cases and kind of and cause a backlog and everything. And also they they want to prevent and this kind of goes back to kind of uh, the habeas corpus and bill came. They also want to prevent putting people in jail who are innocent or there's not a, there's not sufficient evidence to hold them. So this is, the grand jury is kind of like a screening process where you are accused of a crime, the evidence has to be shown what crime you're being accused of, and then they're going to set up a court date. On trial date, actually. Should be. Public, public trial put down Sixth Amendment. The 
Yeah, and that's and putting out six remember that that's probably open up. Um, everyone realize that in our system it takes, you know, from from start to finish the trial day it takes about a year because of the backlog. And it might even take longer. Remember in the Richard Ramirez case it took like a year to pick the jury because they Trial by jury is just the idea that the, the jury has to be an unbiased jury, an unpartial jury, an un, uh, when I, I brought the idea of the Richard Ramirez, um, it took a year to pick that jury because they had to find people that did not already hear about the case and did not already think he was guilty. Uh, even though he was eventually found guilty. Um, Remember that as soon as people, as soon as Richard Ramirez was caught, once again everyone assumed he was guilty. He was eventually found guilty. But they had to find a jury that didn't come in there who did not know the story, was not familiar with the story, and didn't already have sort of conclusions about it. Yeah. Um, that is one of the most difficult things. Even though he's familiar, and now we have like we have like seven law shows on TV. Um, law has become become the interesting thing for TV. Anyone seen how the jury the jury process goes? Who must have approved the jury? The lawyers and both lawyers, okay. Um, the pros prosecutors have to be. Um, you have you have to have no more appeal left. So, um, and, you know, the lawyers, the cops, etc. Appeal takes is a lot of money. You know, and almost, it's almost the same. A lot of most people know what Miranda is before we get in here. Um, mm -hmm. It's on. Yeah, it's on one. Six, it's yeah. The, but supposed to be Okay. Okay, so they know they can't say anything. Okay. Alright, so the Miranda and the Miranda ruling. Um, does the police have to? The police, before any questioning, must read you your rights. They must announce all your rights. And our book on one sixty-seven kind of goes through real briefly. And most of you guys know know that you have the right to remain silent, which is the Fifth Amendment right. Um, more than any statements may make. They make maybe use against them. And that they have the right to have an attorney present during questioning. Uh, told that if, any, if they cannot afford prior attorney, one will be provided. Notify that they may terminate the question at any time. So we're talking about really fifth and sixth of them that kind of lumped in together. Uh, everyone knows the right the right to remain silent is kind of fifth of them. But the big thing on Miranda um, that was uh, that comes from Miranda and even actually they called them Miranda leading Miranda rights. Uh, what is the name of Miranda? It goes back to the case of Miranda. Oh. Okay, we're going to come back to Miranda. Let's just go through this real quick. Cruel and unusual punishment. Put down Eighth Amendment. Navy, the Walkers. 